Hello, welcome to study of biology at Innovation Academy. In today's video lecture, we are going to learn about a topic formation of bile pigments. So by the end of this lecture, you should be able to answer four questions. First, what are bile pigments? How, where are they present? How are they formed and how are they excreted? So let us answer these four questions one by one. Let us answer the first two questions. The first question is about what are bile pigments? So as the name indicates, these are pigments, but these are produced in a living body so they are called as biological pigments now when these biological pigments are produced they are actually produced in metabolism so they are produced during the metabolism of porphyrins now what are porphyrins porphyrins are actually heterocyclic organic compounds which are consisting of modified four pyrrol rings now whenever we speak about these bile pigments these bile pigments actually consist of a chain of four pyrrol rings now if you know the difference between say i say porphyrin and a chain of four pyrrol ring when I say chain, that means they are present in linear form. Whenever I speak about porphyrins, porphyrins are actually present in the form of a cyclic tetrapyrrole structure. So as the name indicates, cyclic tetrapyrrole, tetra stands for four, there are four pyrrole rings, but they are present in cyclic manner. So now whenever we draw these porphyrin rings, we know that these porphyrin rings, they are actually present in a cyclic manner. Like this. Now whenever we speak about bile pigments, these bile pigments, they contain four pyrrole rings, but they are present in chain, that is they are present in linear form and they are actually produced from these porphyrin molecules now obviously to convert these into the pigment you need the presence of enzymes so they are generated because of enzymatic reactions these enzymatic reactions work during say we are going to learn one example these are going to work during heme degradation now what exactly is heme that we are going to learn right now so basically if you are asked what are bile pigments these are produced during the enzymatic degradation of heme a component of hemoglobin now this let us answer the second question the second question is where are they present they are actually present in bile now what is bile bile is actually uh, a juice or a secretion which is produced by liver and when it is produced by liver actually it is stored in a small cyclic structure called gallbladder from gallbladder this bile is added to small intestine at a u-shaped region that is called duodenum so duodenum is actually the site at where the bile juice is added from gallbladder into small intestine so this is about the first two questions what are bile pigments and where are they present now let us try to answer the second and uh, the third and the fourth question the third question is how are they formed and the fourth one is now how are they excreted so let us try to find out the answer to these two questions
so just now we have said that they are formed during the enzymatic breakdown of heme so from where heme comes it comes from hemoglobin from where hemoglobin comes it comes from rbc's where are rbc's they are present in blood so let us start with blood human blood contain rbc's that is red blood cells rbc's they have fixed life span the life span of rbc's is approximately 120 days now after completion of 120 days the worn out rbc's they are actually removed by res but this res is the full form of this is reticulo endothelial system these worn out rbc's they are actually removed at two places in reticulo endothelial system one is liver and the another is spleen but what this system is and what it is made up of this system is actually made up of two main components it is made up of a network of connective tissue that is actually of reticular type so let us call it to be a network of reticular connective tissue and in these reticular connective tissue there is presence of phagocytic cells so the main component of this system is presence of phagocytic cells the main phagocytic cells which are found in this system are two they are called monocytes and macrophages so now these rbc's they are uh, degraded or cleaved by phagocytic cells now when you break open the rbc's what is present inside the rbc's they mainly contain hemoglobin inside so upon breakdown of rbc's hemoglobin is released hemoglobin basically is a conjugated protein what is the conjugated protein that is basically made up of two components so hemoglobin basically consist of a protein part that is called globin and a non protein part which is called heme any protein which is consisting of protein as well as non protein part is called a conjugated protein so the protein part in hemoglobin is globin and the non protein part in the hemoglobin is heme now when we break down globin it will lead to formation of amino acids and these amino acids they can be reused for synthesis of new proteins remember the sites where this is going to happen is liver and spleen so in liver and spleen whatever globins are uh, decomposed forming amino acids these amino acids can be reused for new protein synthesis heme heme basically consists of two components one is iron in the center at that iron could also be reused and the second component is actually called porphyrin now just now we have seen what is porphyrin now this porphyrin is further decomposed with the help of enzymes now this porphyrin is decomposed with the help of an enzyme called heme oxygenase and it is converted into a pigment called bilirubin and this bilirubin pigment is actually green in color now this pigment is acted upon by another enzyme and that enzyme is bilirubin reductase this enzyme will convert bilirubin bilir bilirubin into bilirubin which is yellow in color now whatever bilirubin is formed that bilirubin is actually called by another name called free bilirubin or it is also called as unconjugated bilirubin why it is so called unconjugated let us understand the meaning of this unconjugated also this bilirubin is insoluble 
and it is non-polar. Because it is non-polar or because it is insoluble, that need a protein to be transported. Now look at the two sides where um, bilirubin is produced. One is liver, another is spleen. So obviously when it is produced in liver, there is no need of transport of this to the liver. But when it is produced in other tissues other than liver, that means I will call it to be extra hepatic tissues. So at that case, you need to transport that bilirubin to liver. And further metabolism will be carried out by liver. So to transport this bilirubin to liver, we need the help of a protein and that protein is serum albumin. Albumin protein which is present in serum that will help for transport of bilirubin to liver. Now where is bilirubin present? That is now present in liver. So let us imagine this is liver. And bilirubin is now transported along with albumin to liver. Inside liver, there is an important enzymatic reaction going on. To this bilirubin, we now join another molecule. And that molecule is glucuronic acid. So we now join glucuronic acid. What is glucuronic acid? It is actually a sugar acid which is derived from glucose. This joining is also catalyzed by an important enzyme that is glucuronyl transferase. What will happen if you join glucuronic acid? Now whatever bilirubin was unconjugated that is now converted into conjugated bilirubin. Now because of this reaction whatever bilirubin is produced that bilirubin is now called as conjugated because you have joined glucuronic acid with it and now this conjugated bilirubin is soluble so basically we are going to convert insoluble bilirubin into a soluble bilirubin by conjugation that is joining of glucuronic acid and this reaction goes on in liver now whenever it is converted into a soluble form it can now be added to duodenum this bilirubin through bile now will be converted or will be stored in gallbladder and through gallbladder it is then added to u-shaped part of small intestine that is duodenum so now it is added to duodenum Now from duodenum, it will further reach to the next part of digestive system that is colon. Now inside colon, there are different microorganisms. Different microorganisms will act on this bilirubin and will convert this into two products. One is called urobilinogen and another is called stercobilinogen. Now what will happen to this urobilinogen and stercobilinogen? Basically when it is present in colon part, this will be excreted in feces, mainly in the form of stercobilin. So the first fate of these compounds is they are excreted, excretion in feces. And because of presence of these compounds, feces they get brown color. The second fate of these compounds, whatever now are present in the colon, 10 to 15 percent of these they are again reabsorbed in blood when they are reabsorbed in blood through blood again they reach to liver for reaching these to liver you have a circulation called extra hepatic sorry enterohepatic circulation enterohepatic as the name indicates circulation between intestine and liver you know that this type of circulation is commonly called as a portal system. So whatever 10 to 15 percent is reabsorbed that is carried to liver back by enterohepatic circulation.
from this some percentage of this is also going to reach to kidney so this is the third fit some percentage will reach the kidney inside kidney it will be excreted out in the form of urobilin so this pigment is responsible for giving color to urine so then it is excreted in the form of urine so now remember how do bilirubin is formed or how do bile pigments are formed there are two important examples of bile pigments one is bilirubin and another is bilirubin they are actually formed because of enzymatic breakdown of heme part of hemoglobin and they are mainly excreted in the form of feces and urine so this is the answer to all four questions and this is all about the formation of bile pigments so if you do have some queries you can ask for or you can put a comment in the description box thank you